She said you've been briefed on unidentified flying objects. Are they are they real? Apparently, some United States senators have received an actual briefing on this UFO phenomenon. And now, like you, I always wonder why this isn't a bigger story. Listen, Tucker, we don't have yeah. to go all H.G. Wells, War of the Worlds or anything. There's no need for drama. But if you had some stuff flying over your country with a technology no one could explain, maybe it's kind of a bigger deal, right? Maybe we should be a little more yes. concerned. I'm going to be very disappointed if UFOs turn out to be nothing more than visitors from another planet, because I think there could be something much more interesting. And I am thoroughly skeptical about this coming out at this particular time, when the name of the game for the global elite is to create fear amongst people, yes, and also enemies among people. We have to have somebody to fight. This is this has been part of the the meme ever since 9/11. We have to have an enemy to fight. So we had, well, first we had the war on drugs. Then we had the war on poverty earlier on. Uh, then we had um, uh, uh, the, the war on terrorism, of course. None of those have ever been completed, by the way. They're still going. Then all of a sudden we have a new enemy to fight, and that is aliens from outer space. And when you look at the people who are promoting this meme, you only could do one thing. I'd basically just dismiss it as something, some kind of ulterior motive is going on to release this information at this point, and it has nothing to do with UFOs at all. On November 14th, 2004, Commander David Fravor and his wingman pilot took off from the USS Nimitz, which was on maneuver south of San Diego. According to Fravor, the Tic Tac accelerated from a standing position and flew approximately 60 miles in under a minute as fast as 3,700 miles an hour. How did the Tic Tac know the pilot's cap point? And how did it accelerate so quickly? You got something that can accelerate and disappear and then show up 60 miles away. Kind of in awe a little bit, because you go, whoa, we don't have that. You know, and I'm talking, we're flying a, one of the premier airplanes on the planet. What was this? There was a capability out there, don't know where it's from, not saying it's from outer space but not saying it's from here either. Project World Evacuation, he, the human souls off this planet. So I have no, I, no doubt that the demonic world is laying a narrative for something, what I don't know. Here's his book, Fast Facts on False Teaching with Ed Decker. And I wanna go to, for the sake of time, I'll skip some of this here and go to, uh, here we go. Our own speculation is based upon the study of scripture and the study of UFOs, and we emphasize that this is only an educated opinion. What we believe is that we are seeing the world being prepared for the coming of the Antichrist on a UFO. In other words, we believe that UFOs are of a demonic realm. Why do we say this? Because our world today is not looking for a spiritual messiah. It's looking for a technological savior. If some UFO landed on planet Earth, remember this was written in 1995, by the way, 1995. If some UFO landed on planet Earth and out walked a Christ-like benevolent creature, an ET, who claimed to have higher intelligence, who could solve our, all of our economic and environmental and technological problems, the world would flock to him. In virtually all fourth encounters where people claim to have been taken up on UFOs, they all relate the same experience. The creatures told them they could save themselves. They don't need God because they are gods, gods themselves. They don't need Jesus as their savior because they can save themselves through cyclic rebirth, reincarnation. It's the same old doctrine of demons and deceitful spirits as described in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. We do not walk around with a spirit of fear, however. The Word of God tells us as we draw near to the Lord, the devil will flee, James 4, 7. It tells us that greater is he that is in us than he is in the world, 1 John 4, 4. Ephesians 6 describes this spiritual battle and putting on the full armor of God. You run across some of the most interesting names, and it really makes you shake your head. And, and it also ties it directly into the globalist crowd. And the person I'm speaking of in particular is John Podesta, who is a, 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 a very an infamous character as far as I'm concerned, a member of the Trilateral Commission, for one thing. And uh, he was uh, Clinton's uh, chief of, uh, senior advisor, chief of staff during uh, the Clinton administration, single-handedly responsible for all of the climate change policies in America uh, under Clinton. And he's uh, unabashed about it. And then he worked for Bill, or for uh, he worked for uh, Obama as well for several years uh, as his climate advisor, the climate as a climate czar. 
And Podesta has been a real snake in this whole thing. He's also heavily into the occult, which was very well documented with his spirit cooking parties and stuff that his brother was conducting in Washington, D.C. But John, John Podesta, when he left Obama's employ in 2015, he came away saying, somebody asked him, what, is, what do you regret most having not done uh, during your, administra- you know, your time with, with Obama? He came out and he said, what I regret most is not getting the paper, the UFO papers released to the public. That was what he regretted most about serving for with, with Obama for all those years. And of course, he was pumping the release of the files back under Bill Clinton as well. This guy has been into UFOlogy, if we call it that, for, uh, for, for at least two and a half decades. And here is one of the top global figures that's promoting global warming. He's promoting, you know, climate change, a Green New Deal, all that kind of stuff. He's right up there with John Kerry and and other people of that of that class, Greta Thunberg, too, I guess. But um, his biggest concern is not getting the UFO files out. Now you have to ask, what interest would the global elite have in quote unquote releasing? these files to the public. What would be the purpose of it? Why would their interest be there? These are not wingnuts. These are not the Art Bells hiding out in Pahrump, Nevada. Uh, re- God rest his soul, by the way. I, I hope he got saved before he, the end. But, you know, Art Bell promoted this stuff, and everybody thought he was kind of kind of whacked out there and nuts. Well, maybe he wasn't nearly as much as we th- thought back then. But what? why would the global elite be interested in this? I think you just hit the nail on the head with this. This is an intentional deception that's being made to the entire planet, not just the United States. The whole world is watching this right now. And everybody's concerned all around the planet is concerned about UFOs. Why don't we hear people in uh, Germany talking about UFOs though? Why don't we hear eyewitnesses over there? Why don't we hear eyewitnesses from Russia or from China or from other European countries? I don't hear them, I don't see them. All I see is it coming from this particular crowd in Washington DC right now and people like John Podesta. You know, what's going on here? I think we should be able to connect the dots here pretty easily. Decades, what he says is, quote, we're dealing with a yet unrecognized level of consciousness independent of man, but closely linked to the Earth. I do not believe anymore that UFOs are simply the spacecraft of some race of extraterrestrial visitors. This notion is too simplistic to explain their appearance, the frequency of their manifestations through recorded history, and the structure of the information exchanged with them during contact, the medical explanation to which abductees are said to be subjected, medical examinations, often accompanied by sadistic sexual manipulation, is reminiscent of the medieval tales of encounters with demons. An impressive parallel can be made between UFO occupants and the popular conceptions of demons. Human belief is being controlled and conditioned. Men's concepts are being rearranged. We may be headed toward a massive change of human attitudes toward paranormal abilities and extraterrestrial life, end quote. He goes on to say, quote, the symbolic display seen by the abductees is identical to the type of initiations, rituals, or astral, astral voyage, like astro travel, that is embedded in the occult traditions of every culture. The structure of abduction stories is identical to that of occult initiation rituals. Uh, so I think, he go, and again, he goes on to say in another interview, he believes this is demonology. I have no problem with that. 